Hello everyone, welcome back to an in-depth playthrough of Pathways in the Darkness. In this video we're going to be playing Need a Light. In this mission you get some extra flashlights and there's also an enemy that shoots some fireballs at you that we'll talk about, so that could be where they get the name for this mission. Need a Light is also a quote from the Firebots in StarCraft. To get through this mission we're going to come down, we're going to talk to Ed down here, then we're going to kind of come up. This door we can't get through yet. We'll go through this door and it will lock behind us. I'm gonna go around, come down here, talk to Darren, and we'll get some new weapons and items that we'll talk about with this, um, the ring, the grenade launcher. Um, then we'll come around, we'll talk to Sean, come around, talk to Jason, talk about the radio beacon, come around, talk to Steven, and get the some more of this grenade ammo which we'll talk about um, then we'll fight this big blue meanie who's kind of he's a, a boss in the game so we'll talk about him and how to beat him then we'll come back around and end on the save rune so in this mission we're going to be talking to a lot of our fellow US soldiers so there is John who died on a plague of demons and then there's another soldier named Greg who we won't meet till later on but I want to kind of give you some background so you kind of understand um, when we talk to them, you know, where they're coming from. So the path that these soldiers probably took to get here was they probably came from the ground floor, took this right ladder up to feel the power. And then they probably went around here to the Plague of Demons, which is where John died. Then they probably came around kind of like we did to, you know, to, 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 to beware of low flying monsters, went around to this ladder, down to the labyrinth, and then went down to need a light. At least that's the most logical um, path that they would, I think they would have took him, because they were all with John when he died. And we'll see that when we talk to them. Alright, enough of that, let's get into the mission. Alright, here we saved right here. So we're gonna go kind of to the left here. Get all turned around. Cause we wanna go talk to um, Ed over here in the corner. There's some night nightmares and some oozes in here, so kind of navigating carefully. Oh, there you are. <laughs> well, hello there. Okay, so now we see the dead soldier. So let's see what he's got. He doesn't really have anything we want to grab. We can't use the M16, it's broken. The Colt 45, we don't have any ammo for it. And so, this is just basically junk. So we'll go, oh, we gotta get off him and go equip our yellow crystal. That pass it, there it is. And have a chat with him. After we kill this nightmare. Oh, I got the blue crystal equipped. How did that happen? I must have um, bumped the button. We gave you up for dead after the drop. I'm glad you made it. I wish I could help you. What help could he offer? I'm sort of incapacitated or I had help. I mean. Alright. You can ask him incapacitated. That is dead. <laughs> Alright, what's your name, buddy? This is Ed. Who do I look like? Sorry, I guess it might be sort of hard to tell. Yeah, because of course we should know his name. You can ask him about the drop also. This person started out bad and only got worse. We had a horrible getting this far down and it only gets worse. So it looks like they left out the word time after horrible, so that's kind of an error. So this is an error that was introduced in version 2.0 where he says horrible getting. It should be a horrible time, but in version 1.1 it was a hell of a time, so they changed it in between the two versions to clean up the language, so they just introduced that error. Alright, you can ask him about the mission. You remember the mission, don't you? Don't mess with me, man. Yeah, we yeah I, we know we need to get the bomb and go blow up this pyramid. 
to keep the sleeping god from waking. Alright, what about his death? I accidentally triggered one of those doors after he came down the ladder. One of those green things cut me. The guy is carrying me here. So the rest of the guys came this way and he died on their way um, th through this floor. Can I ask him about the doors? Man, I hate the doors in this place. Half of them don't open, and the half that does open make you wish they'd all stay shut. Isn't that a true story? Now you can ask him, place, pyramid, or hole, and he'd say, I'd rather be in Bosnia or even Somalia rather than dead at the bottom of this hole. And if you say Bosnia, Somalia, or joke, you'll say, okay, okay, bad joke. Uh, which, I don't know, it doesn't seem like a very good joke if they get go, I don't know. Maybe that's why he says bad joke, I don't know. <laughs> can ask him about green or nightmare. Yeah, one of those kill me. I'll never see Anna again. Promise me you'll call her when you get back. We'll, we'll go down and talk about this path real quick, but he says he got cooked, so let's ask him about that. An unpleasant sensation, I can assure you. In version 1.1, it said a damned unpleasant sensation, so they cleaned up the language there too. Alright, let's talk about, ask about Anna. Don't joke with me, man. Please call her. They can promise. Okay, that makes me feel better. You've got to make it out now. Don't forget. We can go hit her up when we get back, I guess. No, just kidding. Alright, let's ask some about the guys. We lost John a few hours before I died, and that left Steven, Greg, Jason, Darren, and Sean. Greg was the only one I ever saw again. So this means that Greg actually survived the passage that we'll see ahead and got lower in the pyramid. You can ask him more about Greg. About 10 minutes after everybody left, I saw Greg come running through here. He was carrying the bomb. So Greg basically, after running through the passageway we're going to go to, he saw him um, coming back with the bomb, and then he would have had to go back um, up the ladder to the labyrinth because there's no other way to go. So we'll figure out where he went, you know, later on in the game. Let's ask him about his squad, so we can ask about John. I don't remember what happened to John. I'm starting to forget lots of things. John is the one that died to the visible demons on A Plague of Demons, so... What about Steven? Steven was furious after your shoot didn't open. It set the tone for the whole mission. Okay, and then you can ask him about Jason, Darren, or Sean, and you'll say the same thing. I don't know what happened to him, or most of the others for that matter. That kind of makes sense because he's back here and they all died, you know, down the corridor, so... He doesn't really know. If you ask him about radio, beacon, or extraction, he'll say, The team had all three beacons when they left me here. I don't know where they are now. Well, it says that there are three beacons. In reality, there's only two within the game. At least, I don't think there is a third anywhere, unless I'm missing something, which I kind of doubt it. Now he has the typical three random responses, nothing really too interesting there. Alright, so we're going to continue on. We're just going to kind of hug this side so we can avoid some of the monsters. We'd rather not fight extra guys if we don't have to. Um, I could go duplicate my HE rounds, but it's probably not even that big of a deal. Because we're going to be using a lot of this ammo pretty quick. There's a lot of guys to shoot. We probably won't be resting much to get an ammo. Like how the ooze shot his friend in the back, right there. Alright, just flying through this ammo. This room is it's so easy with the open area, you're like, there's a lot of monsters, but it's so easy to dodge because you can just kind of go back and forth. Like, the only reason they ever hit me is if I'm getting lazy. Now, sometimes monsters will spawn behind you in this hallway, though.
down to 19 bullets. Or magazines, I should say. So now we're in here. Um, let's rest real quick. The door closes behind us. So we have to go forward to fight this big blue mini. Um, so we're gonna talk to these guys first before we move on. So this guy's Darren. Is he dead American soldier? I ran. I ran all the way back here. But it followed me. Killed everyone else. So basically they saw the big blue mini up ahead and he ran all the way back here very scared. And you'll kind of see he sounds scared. You can ask him about his name. My name doesn't matter. Yours won't either in a moment. So you can see he's kind of like lost his mind. He's, he's just super scared, you know, and fearful. He's overcome with fear. So while Darren doesn't tell you what his name is, it's pretty easy to tell because the game gives you the names for all the soldiers. There's a process of elimination. Now, he has an unused dialogue that says, Shh, that's my name, but don't tell them. This is kind of like a similar, di like, strange dialogue to the German soldier on Welcome Tasty Primate. But I don't know. I don't know what you, how to make heads or he tails of it. So let's ask about it. 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 All I see are flames. You'll find out fast enough. You're locked in here, Jew, just like we were. All right, what about the flames? Burning and searing. All I remember is smoke and fire. Well, kind of sounds like the level name need a light kind of fitting. Or what about locked? And the only way to leave is through that thing. Good luck. Yeah, since the doors are locked behind us. Let's ask us, him about everyone. Everyone's dead. Greg, Steven, Ed, you too. You shouldn't have come down here. You'll never leave now. Okay. What about Greg? Greg should have his own dialogue that says, Maybe I didn't see Greg die, but he died somewhere else. Everyone did. I'm not sure why it's not activating. Maybe i mistaken. Maybe it is another unused one, but anyways, that's another dialogue there. Now there's one, that if you say bomb, nuke, beacon, code, grenade, launcher, goggles, M79, infrared, you know, any of those words, you'll have the same response. Forget that man. Try to get out of here. Maybe you can make it, who knows, but forget that. So this guy obviously, you know, forgot about the mission. For his random responses, he says, I don't know anything about that anymore and I don't understand. Um, you know, I guess with what he responds to this, which is weird. Anyways, that's all that Darren will have to say. So let's grab what he has. So he has the M16, which we don't care about. And he has the grenade launcher and the frig made Fragmentation cartridge. There's actually three different kinds of cartridges, and we'll talk about these in a minute when we talk about the grenade launcher. The M79 is an American made grenade launcher. It is a single shot weapon used to fire grenades at high velocities. Okay, let's talk about this gun for a little bit. All the official hint book says is that it's found on Need Light in the area with the big blue mini. Now, the M79 grenade launcher was invented in 1960. And like the M16, it was first used by the US military in the Vietnam War. There are three different types of ammo for this grenade launcher. The first is the high explosive grenade cartridges. We found one of these cartridges on John on a Plague of Demons. Now the way you need to get more is you need to duplicate them, so you shouldn't um, use your single you know, ammo until you're able to duplicate it. The official hint book says this about these cartridges. The 40mm HE cartridge. These are just pure damage. Firing one of these is like FedExing your target in an 18-wheeler filled with damage. Only the black crystal is capable of delivering more damage to a monster's front door. And we'll get the black crystal later on. Um, that's one of the last crystals we'll get. And then next for the ammo we have the projectile or slug cartridge. Here's what the official handbook says about that. The 40mm projectile cartridge. These don't do as much damage as the high explosive cartridges and they don't affect multiple targets like the fragmentation cartridges. So why would you use them? Because they are the only grenades that affect the greater nightmares. So as we'll see, these cartridges are armor piercing. And this is our first armor piercing cartridge we got, which is handy. 
So the projectile cartridge is definitely something that we'll end up using for this grenade launcher. All right, for the last demo, we got the fragmentation grenade cartridges. The official handbook says this, 40 millimeter fragmentation cartridge. These are the room sweeper cartridges. When you fire one, every target within range takes damage and a good deal of damage too. So these cartridges hit, you know, the center of third or half the screen. I'm not sure what the conical area is that they hit, but it's another one of those um, weapons. So basically, the way you do it is you use the high explosive cartridges against single targets that don't require armor piercing. You'll use the projectile cartridges against enemies that have armor piercing, and then you'll use the fragmentation grenades against large groups of enemy. And there's, so there's some times that the fragmentation grenades are helpful. Usually it's only really good against weak enemies because the fragmentation grenades do the least amount of damage. It's best to use the grenade launcher in combination with the other guns because every time you fire a shot, you have to reload it, which takes quite a bit of time. Now this is probably the best time to bring it up, but in the game code, there's actually some string for a M72 law rocket. The string still exists in version 2.0, and here's what it says. This law can penetrate five inches of tank armor. Be sure not to fire it in an enclosed space. Law stands for light anti-tank weapon. It was a single shot disposable rocket launcher. It's interesting to think about what the law rocket launcher would have been like. Would it have been a regular weapon you could use, or perhaps a special weapon you would have had to use to beat a final boss, or another puzzle in the pyramid, like blowing a way out? After all, the law rocket is a disposable weapon with one, only one shot. There are lots of possibilities. Alright, so now that we got that, we're going to continue on. Um, we're probably not going to try to get ammo for this for a little bit. We'll probably try to get some more projectile grenades um, to get some armor priest rounds that we'll need later on. But for now, we don't have like a ton of stockpile on MP41 ammo yet. So we're just going to keep duplicating our MP41 for a bit. Okay, let's talk to um, the next guy. Beware of the flames. You need to find Greg. How do you get down the ladder at the base of the pyramid? Those doors shut behind us. Alright, let's so ask let's ask him his name. I'm Sean Man. Who do you think I am? Are you sure you're okay? What about these flames? You'll find the flames soon enough. Okay. What about Greg? Greg has the bomb. You need to find him and complete the mission. Steven changed the code. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'll ask, have to ask Steven about the code to figure out what the code is to the bomb. Right, let's ask him about the mission. Yes, the mission. Don't tell me you don't remember the mission. Oh, okay. What about Steven? Steven was the first one to die. You'll find his body up the corridor a bit. Be careful. Why do we need to be careful? The thing will probably attack you when you get close to Steven's body. So watch out. Alright, so we're going to have to watch out when we get to Steven, won't we? Let's ask him about the thing. You'll find it soon enough. What about the doors? The first few doors we walked through in this pyramid sealed behind us, and we had no way to go but down. Once again, in version 1.1 it says damn pyramid, so they took that out. So how come the doors were open when the US soldiers first arrived, but they closed behind him? So when we got here, they're closed. Could the sleeping god have been allowing them in and messing with them? Anyways, I'm not really sure how they got down or why the doors are open sometimes, why they're not open other times, and you gotta use the musical interest of it. The game really doesn't explain it. Let's ask him about his death. We all died by fire. Darren was the last. But after I died, it chased him around the corner into that dead end. Alright, we can ask him about radio, beacon, or extraction. Hope you can find an intact beacon, or you're really toast. Okay, what about Ed? Ed bought it as soon as we reached this level. It saved him the trouble of dying here with the rest of us. I think this might be a mistake in the game. I think he's trying to say that Ed um, died as soon as we reached this level. 
because he died at the beginning of the level near the ladder. Um, I don't know. I think there's uh, some error in this um, text. Anyways, let's ask him about John. John died before we realized we needed the infrared goggles to see these snakes a few levels ago. He also has another unused dialogue where he says, He lost it as soon as we saw the thing, and I don't think we, he was fully aware of what happened when he died. I think this um, unused dialogue is in reference to Darren, because Darren has completely lost it, or so it seems. And you know, he has some of the standard, you know, random responses, like, what, I don't understand, say it again, sorry man, you're not making any sense. So we're just going to skip that to save some time. Alright, let's take a look at what he has. So another set of infrared goggles, we're not going to grab them. Flashlight, we don't need that. We'll take the projectile cartridge. We basically, this is just going to add more junk into our inventory, so we don't need it. Alright, let's continue on. There is no monsters in here by default. So th there's only monsters in here if they spawn. So, and here's actually his name is Jason. He has blonde hair apparently. Even though Jason Jones in real life does not have blonde hair, because this is actually Jason Jones basically, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's have a chat with him. After we kill another nightmare spawning behind us. Flames! I see flames everywhere. What's your name, buddy? My name doesn't matter anymore. Oh yeah, sure. We don't we know you have your name is Jason. Let's ask him about his death. We'll find talk more about his name in a minute. That huge blue grinning thing torched us all. So he was grinning. Let's ask him about the blue. We never stopped firing at it. Back up around a quarter, fire back, fire. It's gotta be hurting. You can kill it. Huh, so the thing is already hurt. You know, this game already had a reference on a Plague of Demons, you know, to the Predator. I mean, there's probably multiple references to that movie. But it talks about it's bleeding, you know, we can kill it because it's bleeding, you know. It's kind of going along that vibe again. So it kind of seems like the Predator is having an influence on this fight also. Let's ask about the thing. I don't know if you can kill it, man, but try as hard as you can. Okay. Now if you ask, say Jason, he'll actually respond to that. And he'll say, of course I'm Jason, man. Now you might say at this point, well that's not Jason Jones. But you can actually ask him about pathways, and here's what he says. I'm coding the script in the afternoon of July 22nd. Do you think we'll make Macworld of, on August 3rd? Tensor Denise actually revealed this word pathways in his strategy and tactics article. Tensor Denise worked at Bungie later on. Now, the strange thing is Jason Jones doesn't have random responses, um, to my knowledge. So that's that's all he'll say. Now, let's take a look at what um, he has in his inventory. Um, what? I don't know. So he has you know, some junk, but he has the radio beacon, which we'll need. This is one of three radio beacons your special forces team was to use to signal the extraction team. Double click on the beacon to trigger it. Doing this inside the dungeon will be useless. However, as your signal will not reach the surface. So basically the radio beacon you can only use um, once you exit the pyramid. And that's what the official hint book says. So the official handbook says, this is useless during the game. It becomes useful only at the end of the game. So basically, you never use it and it will automatically be used once you um, exit the pyramid in order to call the extraction team. It just gives you extra time to get away from the pyramid before the bomb explodes basically. Just like Ed said, the description for the radio beacon says there's three radio beacons when in reality there's only two within the game, at least from what I found. If there's a third, let me know, but I'm pretty sure there's only two. So we'll grab that. We got a point, and now we can proceed on to the final guy we're going to talk to. Okay. I don't know why. So this time, the big blue mini came around 
um, the corner, you know, when I was supposed to talk to him ahead of time. And I'm pretty sure it's because of one of those dead months response. So we were going to talk to that German soldier, then, you know, fight the blue, big, big blue meanie. But apparently, you know, um, the big blue meanie is right here. But we're going to talk about him, just pause it and talk about the big blue meanie real quick before we fight him. And then we'll talk to Steven afterwards. So the game kind of screwed up and got things backwards because he moved, because of the spawn monsters. But anyways. So the official hint book calls this guy the Big Blue Mini, and that's where I came up with the name. Here's what it says about him. This guy is tough. He can eat well over 15 high explosive rounds, about the amount of damage it would take to kill 300 phantasms. The good part is, he isn't immune to any of your weapons. So basically, he has a ton of health. In fact, he has 1200 health, and he does 15 to 16 damage per hit. Um, so his damage isn't horrible. But he shoots two fireballs at once, so he could kill you very quick, and then he takes a lot of damage. The official Himpa draft also called him Greed. And the Big Blue Mini is also named Pain within the game coding. So we got Big Blue Mini, Greed, and Pain are all things you can name them. There is a comment in the code that reads, When did we make a moron immune to physical attacks? Which suggests that at some point, the Big Blue Mini was invincible. Obviously, he isn't now. There are actually some other monsters deeper in the pyramid that are immune to all attacks, so perhaps Bungie switched things around a bit before releasing the final version of the game. Matt's old Bungie had said this, Jason does not remember if these names were his idea or not, nor does he remember specifically why they were dropped in favor of the more colloquial description names found in the final hint book. If the Big Blue Mini kills you, you'll get this death message. Well, if you need a light, I guess you got one. So that kind of fits the name of the floor, where you get the light if the Big Blue Mini kills you, because you need a light, I guess, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, using the MP41 or the M79 with the high explosive cartridges along with the Brew Crystal is a good way to kill him. It takes about 8 MP41 magazines to kill the Big Blue Mini versus about 15 high explosive rounds with the grenade launcher. So using the MP41 is the way to go, especially considering we haven't had a chance to duplicate our grenade launcher ammo yet, as we're, you know, still don't have like tons of MP41 ammo. So, but probably pretty soon we'll start um, duplicating some of these grenade cartridges. Now in the game, he has a flint with his hand over his face that I'll show you if you use the orange crystal on him. Some of the other crystals you get later in the game might also produce this effect, but I don't know. I think it might have something to do with orange crystal being fire. So anyways, so let's go equip this orange crystal so I can show that off to you. And I got a backup. So we'll watch him flinch. See that? You can see that. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a blue crystal and we're gonna spam blue crystal, keep walking back, and keep shooting him. Why are we getting so many spawns? I won't use all these blue crystals anyway, so I might as well just bam them on him. And it makes him move so slow so I can get some more hits on him and he doesn't fire as much. This is by far the easiest way to kill him. Maybe my blue crystal will actually break once. This also allows you to get a little closer, I guess. To do some more damage to him, to save some more ammo. Now we still have like tons of magazines left, so maybe what I'll do is I'll go into my cedar box and I'll change my ammo to let's let's reproduce this um projectile. Well, yeah, let's reproduce the projectile grenade for now. Now we will reproduce those projectile grenades so we have some armor piercing rounds. Uh, maybe I'll use a couple of these bullets on some enemies up ahead, so that way you can just see it in use. Okay, let's have a chat with um, this guy. 
Oops, I forgot to change it. My um to the yellow crystal. I'm gonna have to clean up my inventory here pretty soon. It's becoming a mess. Yellow crystal takes so long to charge, doesn't it? Wow, we all thought you were dead. It's a good thing you made it. You're probably the last hope now. Now I think this guy has a second dialogue, but you can't actually um, activate it. So his second intro will say, come on, get moving. We gotta find Greg and the bomb and bring this whole place down. Don't worry about us. I don't think it's actually possible to um, activate the second intro. Well, let's ask him his name. I'm Steven. If I weren't dead, I'd be insulted that you didn't recognize me. Which makes sense. We should know these guys, but obviously we don't. I think it's kind of funny that they have these responses. We can ask him about his death. There's this huge blue creature around the corner. Watch out. I was the first one to get burned. I'm glad we left Greg outside the door. So apparently Greg didn't come through the locked door. So perhaps he stayed um, all the way back by the ladder or the save room with the bomb or something. I don't know. We can ask him about the code. Thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot. We changed the first three digits of the code from 287 to 658 because you were separated from us. Um, so why did he have to change the code because we're separated from them? I don't really understand that. But anyways, we'll take that code and we'll be able to use it with the code from the manual in order to activate the bomb at the bottom. But we gotta get the bomb first from Greg also. You can ask me about John. We lost John a day ago when we were attacked by those invisible monsters. So Ed said that John died a few hours before he did. So basically they had to go through all those floors I showed you at the beginning of the video in order to get where Ed was. This means that we probably got John about a day after he died and we're getting here about a day after they died here. So we're about a day behind them. But he has the same response no matter what day it is in the pyramid. So basically you're always a day behind them. <laughs> As far as random responses, he says, I don't understand what you mean. Sorry, say that again. I can't help you with that. So we're just going to continue on. Flashlight taken. Now here's an amethyst ring we'll talk about. Let's go pick it up. Amethyst ring taken. Let's go look at it. We're getting too much stuff. I'll clean up this inventory. You don't notice anything particularly interesting about this valuable ring. Now here's what the official handbook says. This increases the time it takes for your crystals to charge. Yuck. And in fact it does. I think it about doubles the length of time it takes for your, crist um, your crystals to recharge. So it's probably worthless. Like we can, I can equip it and use it. You see how long it takes for the yellow crystal to recharge now. It was already long enough. Now it's like super long. So we're going to unequip that. And we're just going to move this to one of our um, canvas bags. Some of this other stuff. Like what's some other stuff we don't need? The diamond necklace we don't need. So we can just throw this in our canvas bag. Any other junk we got? Um... I guess we gotta hit tab to throw it in there. I hit the wrong button. We'll throw the ameth amethyst ring in there. Any other junk we have? Um, oh, crystal radio beacon. The radio beacon we could just throw in our canvas bay because we never, we need it in our inventory, but we never really use it. So we don't need this other flashlight either. The game kind of forces you to pick up a flashlight by putting it on the ground. Alright, any other junk in our inventory? We'll need that red cloak eventually. Okay, so that's better. So now we got a few potions. Now the official hint book doesn't mention this red or blue potion being here, just the brown potion. So that's kind of interesting, but... Do we not have the grenade launcher? Oh, maybe it's because... I think I didn't actually pick up the grenade launcher. <laughs> I didn't pick up this guy's stuff either. There's another radio beacon we don't need. 
I can't believe how many monsters are spawning in here. This is ridiculous. So, I think we forgot to pick up some of these guys' stuff, so we're just gonna go back and pick it up real quick. Because I'm used to, you know... Okay, we got a point for picking up the grenade launcher too. So there's the grenade launcher. And we can change it to, you know, let's change it to the projectile cartridge. Just because I want you to show it. So you see how long it takes to reload. Um, and it's pretty worthless at this point. We're getting some cartridges. We'll probably wait till we have like 20 or some. Then we'll probably switch to the fragmentation cartridges. We'll probably never use the high explosive cartridges because like these machine guns and stuff just end up doing more damage anyways. So the real part will assign is hitting multiple monsters at once. I'm thinking that's probably how I'll use it the most so. Because you can only like you know Duplicate one ammo at a time. You might as well just duplicate the best weapon rather than, you know, using the other weapons, you know, with worse ammo. That's the one bad thing about the pseudo box in this game is it kind of just the incentive. You know, it doesn't incentive. Incent Why can't I pronounce that? <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't make you want to use weapon all the weapons. Anyways, alright, we'll save this at the save room and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.